Hello, everybody. My name is Sergei Kreins. I'm from young uh, company Thermodrone from Slovenia, where we incorporate drones and satellites and other modern technologies into the food production, into agriculture, to reduce the use of pesticides and fertilizers. Today, I will present you our uh, practice, our work in practice uh, in the field of precision farming. Uh, which all started in year uh, 2017 in, in collaboration with our local university from Slovenia, uh, with University of Maribor, with faculty of, uh, of uh, uh, bio, uh, bioengineering and life sciences. Uh, at first, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look a little bit about uh, what precision farming is by uh, by, by definition, and what are some uh, pre-requirements. And uh, later on, we will talk about uh, what was our process of uh, incorporating uh, this, uh, this technology into practice, and what was our learning curve, if, uh, curve, if may I say so. So, by the definition, the precision farming is uh, some kind of a concept of, uh, of management of farms uh, with a focus of uh, optimization of uh, resources. Uh, we have in our minds, especially seeds, fertilizers and pesticides uh, with the final goal to increase the yields uh, for farmer, to decrease the environmental pollution improve and in, uh, maintain healthy environment. So precision farming, are actually not just modern uh, nowadays uh, modern technologies for an example modern uh, machine uh, but are also optimization of resources according to the actual needs and uh, reasonless uh, based on available data the way of working so the farmer's habit needs to be uh, improved i'll not say changed but uh, improved to uh, to, to uh, accommodate this uh, precision farming concept. So again, the goal is to uh, the goal is to reduce the environmental impact and to increase the resource efficiency and uh, improve uh, social, economic, uh, uh, and market competitiveness of uh, producer or farmer on the local and global markets. But of course, to, to gain the maximum, the maximum benefits uh, in precision farming, uh, it is, uh, the machinery is very, uh, how should I say, um, it is very good to have the modern machinery that supports different uh, uh, advanced, uh, uh, advanced functionalities. For an example, we have, uh, we are talking about uh, modern fertilizer spreaders, modern modern uh, plant seeders and modern sprayers so they can really really make precise uh, final treatments and final uh, final execution of uh, tasks and plans on the field based uh, to the uh, defined tasks uh, that were defined ba uh, based on the uh, available data from uh, other data inputs so this type of uh, smart machinery needs uh, another, uh, another smart piece of equipment, which is installed on the tractors. Uh, they, uh, these are the special tractor terminals that are connected to the uh, smart machine via, uh, via uh, one uh, bus called ISO bus. It's a standard connection that connects this terminal with the machine and on these uh, tractor terminals all the all the data uh, all the tasks are imported and defined so that uh, uh, on the field uh, machine carries carries out uh, tasks uh, as uh, autonomously uh, without uh, uh, user intervention intervention but of course, to do this, uh, there is uh, also uh, uh, one another thing needed. Uh, and this is the uh, global navigation satellite system, because uh, the machinery uh, and, uh, needs to know its current position so that it can carry out uh, the defined task uh, for each specific 
micro location or position if we define it like this there are a couple of uh, different uh, pro uh, providers of global navigation satellite systems maybe mo uh, most commonly known is american uh, network of satellites called gps um, the these uh, satellite navigation systems uh, are of uh, uh, how should I say, different occurrences, different resolutions. For an example, just plain GPS or GLONASS or Galileo or other satellites uh, provide a currency of uh, around five to 10 meters. For an example, it depends on the, uh, on the uh, uh, location where you, where you are. Uh, but for majority, for majority of cases, for an example, for spreading the fertilizer, this, uh, uh, this uh, occurrence is uh, more than enough. But for uh, pre precision selective spraying of pesticides and for an example, for precision variable seeding rates for precision planting, uh, this is not sufficient. So therefore, there are... Um, uh, different attitudes of how we can improve this occurrence. Most commonly known is, for an example, with uh, 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 referencing to the uh, ground station, uh, ground stations, uh, and with uh, referencing to the ground stations, we can achieve the currency of uh, uh, up to a couple of centimeters, which is more than enough for these type of applications. Uh, so here is one not so smart uh, uh, example of farming uh, equipment. Uh, it's a fertilizer spreader, but uh, I must say that uh, uh, this uh, basic uh, equipment can be used to some extent uh, as well to uh, practice these precision farming techniques. But of course, uh, really to the limited extent and on smaller, smaller fields and uh, with some other uh, requirements uh, as well. So how did we start incorporating this in practice? It all started in year 2017, where we met with uh, one uh, local farming company. Um, and uh, actually we have started small talk about uh, the drones in, in, in practice. So we were also uh, uh, experts in the field of drones uh, before that on the, uh, in power line industry, uh, but uh, we didn't, uh, we were not present in uh, agriculture with this technology yet. After small talk with our, uh, local farming company, they have mentioned that no one is actually uh, uh, practicing this technology in practice. There is no real service provider in nearby markets and in local market that would, uh, uh, that would integrate this technology to their daily processes because we must uh, take in into consideration that all these uh, modern technologies, modern machinery and modern uh, data, uh, data um, inputs from satellites and drones um, generate complex data structures that are not so easy to understand for farmers that are in majority of cases not IT experts. So these things needed to be really uh, simple and easy to use for them so that they, they would really um, get the best benefits, uh, the maximum amount of benefits uh, possible of this technology without sacrificing their uh, daily routine and without uh, uh, and to, due to the lack of the knowledge. So we have started uh, a collaboration with them. Of course, we needed uh, uh, the tech, uh, the uh, expertise from agriculture area where uh, our faculty for bioengineering and life sciences came uh, uh, in. And uh, from then on, we have uh, made a really good progress. Um, so just one basic information of how do, uh, based on what we are doing, what we are doing, is that we are actually using the uh, optical optical sensors from uh, drones and satellites. These are multispectral sensors that are recording the 
uh, deflected uh, light in different wavelengths uh, from the from the plant and the plant has one really interesting uh, interesting um, way of showing us when it's uh, under the stress or when it's healthy uh, it uh, it shows the biggest difference in life in light uh, light reflection in uh, some of those uh, wavelengths, especially in near infrared uh, wavelength. And based on this uh, uh, data that acquired with drones and satellites, uh, we then calculate uh, special vegetational uh, indexes, uh, which shows us the, uh, the, the stress areas, depression areas on entire field and the healthy areas. Of course, from this, uh, we cannot uh, detect uh, and we cannot say for sure what is the cause of these uh, uh, depression states. It can be due to the, I don't know, uh, pests or diseases attack. It can be due to the irrigation problems. It can be due to the lack of nutrients in soil, uh, soil structure, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this just shows us the general picture of the crop. Uh, based on that, we are then uh, performing uh, sc uh, crop scouting on field to detect the real cause of these stress areas. And for an example, if we take uh, example of fertilization of, uh, of wheat cultures, uh, uh, if we uh, eliminate the occurrences of pests and diseases and we know for sure that this is due to the differences, for an example, in soil or in, uh, uh, in soil structure or in uh, nutrients uh, uh, in soil. Uh, we then perform uh, target uh, target um, nit uh, uh, test, uh, nitrogen tests on field so that we can uh, define how much of uh, nitrogen application needs to be done uh, in each uh, in each area. For an example, in this picture here, we can see. Uh, I don't know if you can see my uh, my mouse pointer. Uh, we have uh, divided this entire uh, field to uh, two different areas, and uh, in this uh, kind of scenario, we take sh uh, we perform short uh, fast nitrogen tests in, for an example, in just this red area and in this uh, how is this orange or uh, what color is it area, and based on the measured values and. Uh, and the data from uh, nutrition levels in uh, nutrient levels in soil and so on, we then uh, define the um, fertilization plan. This fertilization plan is then uh, exported into the data types that is suitable for integration to, into the tractor terminal that we have seen uh, before. And uh, when the when the data is su successfully integrated into the tractor terminal and the connection of, of, uh, with uh, of terminal and uh, um, for in this case the fertilization spreader is uh, uh, successful, the predefined fertilization plan is then automatically carried out uh, on the field. So. Uh, the user, uh, the tractor driver, does not need to, to do anything. Actually, it just starts the uh, execution of this fertilization plan at uh, the start when he arrives on the field, and that's it. Everything is uh, carried automatically by itself. Here, for an example, is the uh, presentation of uh, how this works in reality. So. We can see that the fertilizer, uh, the fertilizer spreader knows its position, and based on the disposition, uh, actually the terminal calculates everything. And based on this uh, position, the uh, amount of uh, fertilizer is uh, variably applied uh, based on the predefined uh, fertilization plan. With this, we can uh, we can achieve uh, two things. For an example, if we have a pretty heterogeneous uh, uh, fields, so that means that we have a lot of sand uh, sand areas and uh, a couple of uh, sub areas with more quality soil, uh, we can decrease the use uh, amount of fertilizer in these areas uh, because the fertilizer gets uh, un unused. It just goes into the um, into the uh, water, uh, into the groundwater, uh, 
uh, actually we have uh, with this we have uh, produced the environmental pollution and uh, we have uh, thrown away the money just into the groundwater uh, in the uh, so here in this use case we can we can uh, generate generate short term uh, savings that uh, have no negative effect on the uh, final uh, final crop um, crop yield but in the cases where we have more uh, homo uh, homogeneous uh, uh, fields we can uh, we do not uh, we do not lower the use uh, of uh, lower the amount of fertilizer used but we um, we arrange it more efficiently so for an example um, in cases where on almost all fields we can see some kind of stress uh, depression states and so on and if we see this in uh, early stages of fertilizations uh, we can redistribute the actual amount of fertilizer uh, so much that we can uh, achieve the uh, better final yield with uh, how should I say, with leveling the, the crop. Uh, for an example, in early stages of growth stages, if the crop has some depression states, we can, uh, we can uh, get a bigger amount of fertilizer in more depressed states and smaller amounts or uh, more healthy states. And in second uh, uh, fertilization phase, uh, we can already observe the leveling of the entire crop which uh, on the on the final yields uh, can produce uh, more uh, more uh, more level uh, yields uh, which we have already done in practice and we have uh, we have uh, proven this with using the yield maps as well so here is one perfect example of what I just said. Uh, here is pretty uh, homogeneous uh, field, but due to the uh, little differences, uh, the almost half of this field was uh, uh, under the stress. And uh, using this technique to uh, to uh, decrease the fertili fertilizer amount in a green, more healthy area in first and second fertilization phase and to uh, a little bit increase this fertilization amount in a more stressed phase uh, we have achieved to uh, gain uh, around uh, one ton per hectare bigger yield in this stressed state uh, as per uh, previous uh, years as per uh, historical uh, data uh, so actually there was no there was no short term saving on the fertilizer cost in this case but it was a long term benefit at the end of the season at harvest time uh, we have also performed some uh, uh, different measurements for uh, protein content and other uh, parameters uh, because we uh, also wanted to know if we can plan the harvest time more efficiently to gain more optimal uh, more optimal uh, 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 contents of the protein and uh, other stuff to get better uh, market price uh, at the sales point so basically this is uh, how we can use this technology through the growing season and the harvesting season but it is also useful in after, after harvest time. Uh, in this uh, slide, we can observe the, okay, the fast uh, nitrogen tests that are performed during gro growing stages for fertilization phases. But uh, based on the uh, depression states that we can observe uh, during uh, crop growth, uh, we can predict, uh, actually our, preposi uh, our preposition was that the crop by itself shows us the best what is the, in what uh, uh, state is the soil by itself. So based on that we have, uh, after the harvest time, we have defined uh, two, uh, two or more uh, different areas with those depressions, where, where were the worst depressions, where were the uh, a little bit better and where was the best soil. And based on that, we have performed the uh, target soil samplings. 
uh, we have uh, we have compared these to traditional soil samplings. For an example, in this in this field that we can see here, uh, we would uh, in traditional way we would, for an example, take the uh, soil samples in I don't know uh, Z patterns or something like that. But uh, in this case, uh, we have performed uh, also uh, the target soil sam samplings. For an example, we took the soil samples from yellow areas uh, first and then another soil sample was taken from this uh, orange uh, area and uh, after the analysis uh, we saw that the uh, uh, target soil sampling show us, uh, showed us a uh, um, difference of one, um, uh, of one class uh, in soil uh, nutrient contents. Uh, based on that, we have then prepared uh, uh, basic fertilization plans so that uh, basic, fertil uh, basic fertilization was done really due to the actual needs by uh, each sub area on the, uh, on the field. Um, so our conclusion was in this case and all, also in other cases that if we take this approach, we can, uh, we can level the, uh, the soil quality on the field um uh, and uh, optimize the costs on the long run for an example if we just use the traditional methods we then we can on the long run we can um uh, we can uh, we can get even more uh, even less uh, uh, nutrients in poor areas and we can uh, i don't know maybe over over fertilize the areas which are already in the good states of course, this everything needs to be uh, consistent with the final yields. Here we can see one example of the yield map that we have uh, generated. Uh, the goal is to uh, is to uh, merge to integrate different data data sets, data inputs uh, from yield maps, from uh, soil data, soil passport data. From uh, actually from even from weather data and so on, uh, so that we can, based on this, perform as precise uh, next steps as possible, and to uh, to, to to eliminate uh, possible um, possible um, possible long-term damages and uh, possible negative out outcomes as much as possible. So here is the here is our concept uh, of how of uh, how we are doing it everything and of course uh, as uh, already mentioned before all these different uh, data data uh, data inputs and so on um, generate uh, pretty complex data structures and. Uh, Usually, farmers are not um, the IT experts to understand them, and to and usually they do not have time to uh, to get to um, uh, to dig deeper into this data. What does this mean, and so on? So our goal is actually to integrate all this into one into one uh, easy to use service or solution, so they uh, really don't need to. Bother with the technical aspects of this, uh, uh, and they can use this technology to really the best extent as as possible. So I would like to thank you for your attention. That would be all from my side.